Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between. It's nice to see you. My name is Dustin Cormier. You're watching another episode of How to Rock Spirit. I've been away for this channel for quite a long time because I've been focusing on my other channel called How to Rock Astrology. Uh, if you're interested in where I've been, uh, I've been really making quite a bit of leeway in that channel. So if you want to check out How to Rock Astrology, please feel free. Now, uh, I've been coming back from my obsession with astrology, and I'm moving back towards getting into doing some readings about general yoga and yogic philosophy through my channel, How to Rock Spirit. I'm glad to have you hanging out with me today. It's the first episode in a series where we're going to be talking about Yoga, the Science of the Soul by Osho. This is a very special book to me. Uh, what this book is all about in particular is Osho's transla translation of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Now, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali are a very special medieval era, really very early, uh, you know, uh, this was compiled around to the second or fourth century area of the common era, you know, about 200, 300, 400 AD. And this is a book that is highly regarded as being very important to, it's, it's one of the final statements of the science of self-realization, the science of yoga. As we're going to, as I'm going to mention, the path of Kriya Yoga uses Patanjali's Yoga Sutras in its path of the science of self-realization. It's unique in that it is so scientific about something as spiritual as the world of yoga and self and soul and all these things. Uh, this is one of the greatest books ever made for conveying the universal science of soul realization, of the nature of the self, of the unfolding self, which goes, it, it transcends religion, it transcends spiritual beliefs because it's a science. It might be hard for you to believe, but you know I recommend that you get into the book to really see what exactly that's all about. Now, I have a little slideshow talking about a few things here. Uh, we're going to talk about Patanjali, we're going to talk about Osho, we're also going to talk about how it relates to Kriya Yoga. Uh, I should say at this point, it's important for everybody to know, that I am currently involved in an apprenticeship of Kriya Yoga with Ryan Kirksack. Uh, you can find Ryan Kirksack online, and he does great work in the world of Kriya Yoga. Now. I should say that in the Kriya Yoga lineage, which I'm an apprentice in through Ryan Kirksack, uh, he recommends not to discuss the literature outside the given discourses of our teacher, Ryan, who is trained in the matter. So for those who are in Ryan's Kriya Yoga apprenticeship, I would say I should mention that Kriya Yoga has its own version of the Yoga Sutras. And Osho's version, which we're going to be reading, it, can, it won't it shouldn't be considered to replace the works of more serious Kriya Yoga authors. I enjoy Osho's writing, and I invite you to consider this YouTube series as a fun supplemental reading, but not as a replacement to more devoted Kriya Yoga authors. Because Osho kind of does his own thing. That's why I'm making this YouTube series. It's for anybody who wants to read Osho's version of these Yoga Sutras. It's a little bit more... Uh, he unfolds it and spools it. You know, you can often make fun of Osho. He's got that very slow, calm way of talking about the things that he talks about. And he kind of just unspools his spontaneous consciousness about what the Yoga Sutras are all about in this book. So for those who want to hang out with me and go through... Osho's version of the Yoga Sutras. That's what this series is all about. So let's get into talking a little bit about this YouTube series. First of all, who is Patanjali? As with many authoritative scriptures in classical yogic literature, the author of the Yoga Sutras, named Patanjali, could have been an amalgamated figure of various authors. Could have been several people around this era 
who was just amalgamated into the name Patanjali. It's generally agreed upon that the author or authors who created these sutras found in the writings of Patanjali, the era of time they were in generally spanned around the 2nd and 4th centuries CE, common era. Now, as a medieval era writing, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras are considered to be outside of the more religion-based literature of the other Vedic texts, such as the Mahabharata era, you know, that's got the Bhagavad Gita in it. Uh, you know, even things like the Ramayana, uh, Vasishta's Yoga, a lot of these things are a bit more spiritual and they try, try to apply science to spirituality. Patanjali's writings is a book of science, which is scientific first and spiritual second, in a way. Uh, so Patanjali's Yoga Sutras contains a flavor of scientific reckoning, which separates it as a concise methodology for engaging with the psychology universal to all mankind and all humankind. And this is one of the reasons why these Yoga Sutras are so important to today's time, because people in today's time need this scientific backdrop in order to take yoga at its deepest roots seriously. Now again, the Yoga Sutras are considered essential for those on the path of Self-Realization Fellowship's lineage of Kriya Yoga. Now if anybody wants to check out more about Ryan Kirksack's Kriya Yoga Apprenticeship, you can check out kriyayogaonline.com for more information on joining his apprenticeship program. And he basically has a guru who was a direct disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda. So there's a direct lineage of gurus here. Uh, it's one I've been personally getting into, and it's really good for me. <laughs> so I wanted to keep that as a caveat for anybody who might be interested. Now, as for this YouTube series, we're going to be talking about Osho's book, Osho's translation of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. So who is Osho? Osho, a.k.a. Bhagwan Rajneesh, and he's got a few other names. He is an arguably controversial figure whose contributions to translating and condensing articles of spiritual literature. Uh, his contributions are highly regarded in many spiritual circles, particularly those who engage in the Eastern non-dual philosophy of Tantra. You know, there's a lot of people like uh, the Ista people, International Sacred Temple Arts, who are really into Osho. Uh, there's many Tantric circles in particular in today's modern age who revere Osho and his writings. Uh, Osho is only a controversial figure because of the nature of his material, his, his uh, openness about experiencing materialism for what it is. He had an almost Zen attitude to the nature of material, uh, taking it as no different from the soul and the spiritual archetypes of the soul. In the same way that one's arm is no different from oneself, yet it is at the same time. If you were to point at my arm and say, is this Dustin? You'd be right and you would be wrong. In the same way, if somebody points at the body and says, is this the self? You would be right and you would be wrong. This is the trickiness of Osho. You know, he's the guy who had, like, he liked, he had a bunch of cars that was a part of his, you know, his 11th house gains and acquisitions in life. Uh, and he had a lot of these material items to kind of express that materialism is not bad, it's the attachment to them that's bad. That's a, you know, he's a debated figure in this way. But those who read his work find it to be, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding when you read anything that he has done or said. He's in the year of the metal goat, like me. Osho regarded the earthly appetites of the body-mind complex as the very laboratory wherein illumination and enlightenment had to be explored and grounded and channeled. It's no use being a spiritual-minded person without engaging with that potential of spiritual potentials here on Earth and not allowing the vibrations of Earth to obstruct it. 
Osho considered that karma is the vehicle through which dharma is attained. And he thus insisted that honest self-inquiry of the nature of the body-mind complex is a part of the critical path of liberation, of moksha, of liberation of the soul. Now, this little part of the reading, this actually comes from the back of the book here, as we can see. That's where I'm kind of getting this next little bit. So this is kind of like giving the details or the, uh, you know, what this book is all about. Much of what is known today as yoga emphasizes physical postures and exercises to increase flexibility and health relaxation. That's what everybody knows is hatha yoga. But in fact, yoga as it has its roots in understanding human consciousness and its fullest potential. Yoga was developed over centuries, longer than centuries, of rigorous investigation and research in the East. In Yoga, the Science of the Soul, Osho explains some of the most important Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, who himself was an early scientist of the soul. Patanjali is credited with being the father of Raja Yoga, the royal path, also known as Ashtanga Yoga, the eight-limbed path, which we're going to talk a little bit about uh, even in this video, but ultimately more so in this series. This is a fresh translation of this ancient text, which combined Yosho's unique insights into the modern mind and its psychology with these Yoga Sutras written by Patanjali. So here we have, just to give a glimpse of things, you know, so everybody knows what we're talking about. It's the classic Raja Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, they're the same thing. It's the Yamas, the Niyamas, Asana, Pranayama, Prana regulation, Pratyahara, which is sense withdrawal, Dharana, which is single pointed concentration, Dhyana, which is a contemplation, sort of a trance-like energy, and samadhi is the full continuum or the momentum of the trance taking you over because you've given so much time to it. Uh, and ultimately, this can also be translated as liberation. You know, they say that there's maha samadhi as well, which is when the momentum gains a, a transcendental men momentum from many soul lifetimes of practicing the art of samadhi at which point you can attain this moksha and be freed in the world of material while still being in it. There's a real, there's a lot to this. And, you know, as, I, as I've been kind of saying, I've been exploring the path of Kriya Yoga, and to me, Kriya Yoga gets at this even better than Osho does. It's still, a, this is still a very useful supplemental reading for coming to understand what is being described in these yoga sutras. But in my opinion, Kriya Yoga does a more concise, scientific, direct job of explaining how and what samadhi means and how to get there in the most reliable way. So again, check out Ryan Kirksack's website, kriyayogaonline.com, if you want to come into something that's a bit more serious than what we are talking about in this YouTube series. Uh, maybe I should say more direct. That being said, Osho's work is still not something to be completely thrown away. It's a very useful stepladder to, under, to understanding what is ultimately at the top of this heights of the yoga experience. Just giving an example of, you know, this is the classic phrase that comes from the second verse of the Yoga Sutras. Chitta, yoga, chitta, vritti, naroda. Yoga means the cessation of fluctuations in the field of consciousness. The field of consciousness is already perfect, and the essential nature of the self is still there. But we need to apply objective discipline and certain types of disciplines in order to round out and become fully consciously whole with the nature of the subject. Most yogis get into, I did another video talking about how most yogis are all about the objectives, about bringing energy up through the spine and practicing kundalini and practicing the apprehension of the chakras objectively. 
what the one of the reasons I love Osho's work is because he has such an easygoing way of telling people not to forget the importance of being absorbed in the nature of the subject that is applying the objective techniques. Osho has is one of the greatest examples of the importance of becoming absorbed in the essential nature of the self and applying self-inquiry to see that each person has a different path up to the universal methods of so the science of self-realization. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this series. So this is just a refresher, just a little introduction into what we're going to be getting into in this series. Uh, I hope, you know, ultimately when we start reading the book, I'm going to pretty much be reading it word for word. There's going to be less of this Dustin Cormay's flavor on the thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys enjoy hanging out with me as we delve into Yo Osho's version and idea of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. And feel free to drop me some comments and questions, whatever you like, and I'll do my best to answer them through my own understanding. Thanks so much for watching this, and I'll see you guys in the upcoming weeks when we get into this series. Cheers.